Okay, so now um, I want to go back um, just to, because we went a little fast towards the end. So I want to go back to page 159 and um, explain a little bit, maybe even re learn a little bit inside, because we kind of rushed. We're at a point here where we have finished with the opening statement, quoting Daniel in his prayer of Golis, and which we say Monday and Thursday, starting next week. And I really want you, I'm, I'm serious, take out a sitter at some time, please. Become familiar with what you're saying on Monday and Thursdays. And you'll see a lot of these psukim there. And, and, and underline them and, and focus on them and understand that this is not, you know, we're learning about, I try to choose my Marim discourses that are relevant to our daily life. You know, I, when, when I choose a Mimer, I try as much as possible. So, it says here, Daniel says, Listen, Hashem, see our desolation, see the desolation of the base Hamikdash of Yerushalayim. See, see, Habait, Ure'e. So when you say, when you, when you talk to Hashem and you ask Hashem to see, it begs interpretation. Does God see? Does God have eyes? Does God have ears? And I'm sure everyone has thought about this as you, whether you learned yeshiva as a boy, a teenager, an older adult, a younger adult, you know, what does it mean God sees and hears? And the Rambam, in the Moreh HaNavuchim, in the Guide for the Perplexed, which is not an easy safer. It's a safer, you know, the saying in yeshiva, I don't know if Yoni, you heard this when you were learning yeshiva, but be careful in learning the Mora Hanavuchim, in the, the Mora, we call it with one word, the Mora, the guide. You know why? Because you might go to sleep with a solid question, with no answer, and wake up an apikoris, a heretic, because you don't have an answer. You know, when yeah, you. Yeah, that's that's exactly what they told us. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, but w what's the idea? That the questions are straightforward. Where is God? Who is God? How is God? The questions are easy. It's like chewing gum. You put a piece of gum, you can chew, and it's no big deal. But to come out with a clear answer that makes sense, that is much more difficult. So if you go to sleep with a question, you might wake up with no answer, but on the contrary, a non-believer has to show them. So therefore, before you go to sleep, don't learn the Mora Hanavuchim. Learn that during the gay day where you have time to try to give yourself an answer. The, 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 the saying is, 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 is a, an eye-opener to understand verses in the Torah, in Tanakh, that talk about God's omnipotence, God's existence, God's reality. This is what the Mimer is getting into now. So we're really getting into a very philosophical issue, but it's very relevant to our emunah and daily behavior. And the Rebbe says, to understand this, we have to Look at the, the, the idea of seeing, because Daniel says, Habait ura'e, look and see. So he says, what does that mean? And therefore he brings already Moshe to Midrashim, which contradict each other, or seemingly contradict each other. One Medrash says God sees with one eye, quoting a verse, another, and then it says God sees with two eyes, which is it? How many eyes does God have? How many eyes does Hashem have? And with how many eyes is he looking, Baruch? So the, the Medrash says, I have an answer for you. When the Jews, when we do what Hashem wants, he's looking at us with two eyes, we're all tzaddikim, we're all holy and righteous. We're holy rollers, as Shlomo Karabach would say. Holy, holy, holy. 
But when we goof up, and we take an hiatus, and we take a little dope, and we smoke up, and we hack a chinik, and we play around, you know, we're just having a little fun. Hashem says, hey guy, there's time for fun, and there's kind of fun. And, you know, may, okay, today they're legalizing marijuana, maybe you can get away with it, but let's look at other things in your life. It ain't that great. Ah, one eye. I only look at you with one eye because you ain't cutting it. You ain't doing it. That's the way the Medrash resolves <coughs> the contradiction in verses between one and two eyes. <coughs> Then the, that's one medrash in Shira Shira. Then he brings a medrash in in in, 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 Bereshis, in Bereshis, which speaks about Avram Avinu, and it says Ein Hashem El Yireyov. The eye of the eye, one eye of Hashem is to his fearful one. Ze Avram Avinu. Wait a minute. He just told me that when the verse uses one eye, it refers to a time when one is not doing. The will of God. How can you say Avraham Avinu is not doing the will of God? When the Torah itself, the Torah, not Mech, says, Ki ato yodaiti, now I know ki ki mata, you're a God-fearing person. That was after test number 10. Because Moshe, until test number 10, where he was willing to bring his only son Yitzchak as a, as a carbon, until, until, until then, every other test could have been interpreted as self-aggrandizement. Jumping into a fire, taking your own life, is an act of courage and self-sacrifice, but it could be explained. You know how? The kamikazes. They gave their life for, the, the, for Japan, for their country. Lahavdil. Those terrible terrorists and mamzerim all around us in Eretz HaKadosh. Whether it be the virgins that they dream about, or the money that the family is going to get, or their hatred, there's a reason for their craziness, for their terror. In other words, it doesn't prove that they're doing it for God. They're doing it for themselves. And the Medrash says, and the Torah says, only test number 10. When Hashem says, bring your son as a carbon, that one cannot be explained as I'm doing it for myself. Because no normal person would bring their son as a sacrifice. No, it's an oxymoron. In Hebrew, astira mine ube. It's a contradiction. Yourself, you could do all kinds of things, but with someone else and your son and your only son as bincha as yichidcha yitzchak. Now I know ato. That's why it says ato. Now I know. And Rashi says this. So the Rebbe says, if we're talking about an individual like like this Avram. He's the holy of the holiest. And nevertheless, the Medrash says, Ein Hashem, the I, singular, not eyes, El Yereyav, is upon the fearful one referring to Avram. So how can you tell me that when the, when the Torah or, or Tanakh uses the word I in the singular, it's referring to a situation where we're goofing up. That's, that's what the Rebbe brought here as a contradictory medrash to the earlier medrash. Before I continue, is what I said now clear? Moshe? Moshe Braun, do you understand? If not, let's discuss it. Yeah, thank you. I'm trying to follow you. Uh, I see it now. In, in the sitter. I'm trying to follow you in the sitter. I see it now. What, okay. What What do you see in the sitter? What do you got in the sitter there, Moshe? No, no, I, I, I was looking, I, 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 I'm getting confused between the Ata Shema El El Tefillah Zavdecha, that Pasuk, 
And to the next one, in the next paragraph, I tell you, look, hey, as the Chol Shema, because I see that you're in the in the in the the, the mimer, it's like jumping back between no, it's, it's between both of those, right? That's right, that's right, and it's even a third one. It's even a third one which I was quoting, Habei to Re'ei. If you look further in your Siddur, you'll see, I think it's the beginning of a paragraph with a large word, Habeit Ure'e. Do you see that or not? Hold on. Yeah, I see. Yeah, I, I see Habetna. 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 Right. Right, but forget about but the Habet. Habet, look. Habet, look. <clears throat> right, so... Yeah. So he, he's jumping between, you know, three and maybe even another one. Yeah, but the whole section, the whole section is, is it's the tefillah of Daniel. So, okay. right, okay, but I, I understand why you were getting confused. Okay. 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 That's, that's, that's the only reason why. But, okay. but no, but, but, again, but did you follow, did you follow, the, did you follow what I just explained about the Midrashim and what the issue is over here? I, 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 no, I didn't. You not, didn't. Not, not, not totally. No. What? No. What did you? Was, what did you not? What did you not? No, I'm just. I, I'm not. I think I'm just getting confused between the word "ata" and and then the word here is "hate" and then "habet." Well, what do you mean you're getting confused? "Ata" means now. Uh, "Hate" hey. means. Bend your ear, you know. Bend your emotion. Look, bend your yeah. ear. And habet yeah. means look. It's three different words. And in the first, the first chapter or two, we spoke about the in the first chapter. We spoke about the word ve'ata. Why does he use the word ve'ata? And now, and hate, he didn't really. He just mentioned it, but he didn't really focus on it. And now he's focusing on the word habet. See and look, and he wants to understand what the seeing is. Once, Moshe, okay. Moshe, once he introduced the idea of habet, see, he asks the question, what does it mean God sees? And now he's going into, and so he brings these contradictory medrashim, which is going to lead us into the Rambam's explanation of what it means that God sees. And from here, and from here, hi Hillel, and from here, and from here, he's going to go and explain uh, the overall issue of God seeing. You understand? So, so again, because Daniel, I'm, I'm glad you're bringing this up, Moshe. This isn't just for you. This is for everyone to understand the systematic continuation over here in the Mimer. He starts off with the tefillah of Daniel. And he looks like you say, he looks closely at the wording. And then he finds that in the middle of the tefillah, Daniel says, God, look, habet, habet. And Hillel asked the other day, the difference, we're not getting into habet, to re, see, look. What does it mean God sees? So from there, he, he, he brings a medrashic source for seeing. And he says, well, sometimes it says God sees with one eye, and sometimes with two eyes. What's the difference? And he says, how can it be that, it, you know, because Avram Avinu is Avram. So I just was explaining at length why Avram was so special. And therefore, it, 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 if, if according to the other Medrash, it, it, uh, God, when it said Hashem sees with two eyes, it means it's perfect, it's good. So it should have said about Avram, God sees him with two eyes, not with one eye. So therefore he says, to answer this, and to understand this, we need to clarify what it means that God sees. Where does he bring this clarification from? He brings it from the Rambam, Mora, and Nebuchim. Let us now go into the text, page 159, and learn and actually read what the Rambam says. Okay. <coughs> um... Obeir Rambam, it's four lines from the bottom, towards the uh, the fourth word from the end of the of the line. Obeir Rambam b'mori nevuchim chelagimu peligutes. The Rambam comes along, 
And he explains, not in his book of laws, which is known as Yad HaChazaka, but in the guide. More means a guide, Nevuchim, for those that are doubting. Or in English, a guide for the perplexed. In Hebrew, we usually call the, the more. If you, suddenly, you hear someone say, what does the more say? What does the word more refer to? The guide for the perplexed. So, the Rambam explains this. There were early philosophers. Philosophim, Horishonim. They believed in the existence of a true, blessed, and virtuous creator. They believed in God, in simple English. Elo, Elo. They say, That the knowledge of heaven, God's knowledge, Hirak yediya sikhlis v'loy muhshis. It's only an intellectual knowledge and not an actual. Muchshis comes from the word Baruch, Muchash. Tangible. It's not tangible. It's intellectual. So in other words, Hillel, when we say Hashem knows, what do we mean Hashem knows? God knows. God knows intellectually, but not that God's intellectual knowledge has any kind of um, reality to it. You hear that? That was the understanding, Yoni, of the early, of some early philosophers. The Zehu. And this is how they explained the verse. Vayoimru, and they said, Lo yireka v'lo yovin. He... God does not see the glory often, and He doesn't understand. Yes, Where is that passage from? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I was searching. I don't know at this point. If someone has a Kirkandatia handy, please look it up. But it could be Hillel. It could be that it's in the Tachnon of Monday to Thursday. I, something rings a bell. But I will continue, and if I find it, I'll let you know. And if you find it, please let me know. Okay. So he says, but they, 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 use, they use that verse to explain and justify their understanding of Hashem. That when it says, Lo yirika, the lo yavin Moshe, God does not see and God does not hear, it means that practically he doesn't hear and see. Intellectually he does. But bimuchash, in a tangible way, lo yirika. And they didn't find that, you hear this? They didn't find that as a contradiction to belief in God. Because their understanding of God is an intellect, that God is an intellectual experience. <laughs> so I believe fully there is a creator, but if you ask me what is the creator all about, an intellectual experience. Kihuy is Barech, and this is all from the Rambam. Next page, 169. And they argued, Moshe, that God is way above the notions of tangibility associated with human talent and experience. In other words, they looked and they said, it's a downgrade. It's an embarrassment for Hashem to have to do with chushim, with tangibility. That's Hashem? Are you out of your mind? That's God? <laughs> we need a God to deal with taking the garbage out in the morning like I just did a few minutes ago and making sure everything was dumped out of the dumpster? Come on. Come on. Well, what's with you? What we need God is for the intelligence. That was their argument. Valzehu says the Rambam. This was the um, response and and kind of the Musar, the the Hochachas, Hochachas referring to David Amelech, who he calls the Rambam calls the Chosid. 
Kavanosoi al David Amelech Olav Hashalom. The Rambam's intent with the words Kavan to Chachos Achosid, Hochachos Achosid, the proof of the Chosid refers to David. By Hakoras Moifes Sichli, using um, recognition of intellectual prowess. Be Omroi by saying, Moshe, here's the words, Hanota Ozen, the, the Ozen, the bending of the ear, in Yotzer Ayin, the creation of the eye. The Rambam quotes those verses, Umevayir Ho Inyin Banochas Yesoidis Mamuchish, and he explains those ideas in an intangible way, and how it doesn't contradict Hashem. And he explains. What's the Rambam's explanation? The Chol Poyel Kli Minakelim. Take someone who makes Kli a vessel, Minakelim amongst other vessels. Hinin Lule Sheha Poyel Hanaseh. If the poel, the creator of the vessel, would not put his style, siur, into the vessel, he would not be able to make the vessel. It, you know, this isn't pushing a button and having a machine make something. When you are the poet, and you're making a piece of art, and you're forming a clayly, your heart and soul is in that creation. Is this clear so far? Okay. Okay. If it's not, you gotta tell. If it's not... creation. That's right. Not like uh, yes. this, this was the, the this Nakuda about the about the Kaylee and about what we put inside it. We we learned a different mimer about this about how how the how it's how this this concept about the Kaylee and the okay. I, thank you. I, I don't recall, but I'm glad that you know. But okay, the Hamoshul. But again, he. I, I believe this is the first time in all of our learning we're actually learning a piece of Bore in the Vuchim, and it's all, and it's a, a citation from the Mora. But in Hasidus, yeah, Hasidus, you're right. The, the, the Hasidus has a lot of, lot of a talk about this Kali idea. But look at the way the Rambam, you know, the Rambam's wording and style in the Mora is very philosophical. That's why the, the, the language here is very different than the normal language of Hasidus. It's a philosophical style. It goes along with the early writings at the time of, of, of that period. If you look at others, contemporaries for him who wrote um, the Rasad and, and others, you know, it's a certain um, very philosophical language. And you could say that the Rambam's language countered the, philo- the philosophers of the time. So if you want to talk to someone who's into philosophy, you got to talk their language. If you're going to talk Talmud to philosophers, it means nothing to them. So that's why in the guide, in the Mora, he uses a very different language than in the Yada Chazoka, in the uh, in the in his halacha. Anyway, and the Moshul Sheim Hanapoch Lahoyim Mitzayir Inyan Atfida B'Moichoy. If the designer of a needle would not bring the image of a needle to his mind and to his heart, and he would not have a good understanding, Hillel, of what a needle ultimately should look like and be and its purpose. The needle would never be the needle that comes to be. Asher tushlam ma'ase atfida that would complete the act of sewing, al sad ashleimus aruya in its most complete way, but tachlas ashleimus in the ultimate best way. Baruch, you have a needle. Says the the Rambam that if the creator of the needle would not understand the way a needle should be and the purpose of a needle. And the ultimate ex- 
excellence that a needle provides for sewing, and he would not insert all of that in the needle, the needle will never be a proper needle. In other words, the creator of the piece, be it a needle, be it a cup, be it a piece of art, needs to understand. I can tell you as a writer, I, I, I relate very much to this. Like, before I write, before I write, I need to have an understanding of the entire idea. You know, many times when I interview, I was sitting yesterday and doing interviews with someone in Sydney, Australia, with someone here, someone there, about a subject matter that I want to write about. And I don't begin writing until I can hear and formulate an idea and an opinion. And I get that from talking to people and researching and hopefully coming to a conclusion that I'm comfortable with could be someone else is uncomfortable with, or not happy with, or disagrees. And that's fine. Every writer, every artist, every creator is entitled to their understanding. But you need to have a grasp of the entire idea. And sometimes people say, oh, but don't, don't mention this, and don't say this. And, you know, and I say to them, don't, don't be worried. What you're telling me goes into this air, and goes into this storage place, and it's for me to have an understanding what I put forth in writing is, of course, a whole different experience because it's for the reader. And there are certain things a reader can handle, should handle, should know about. And other things, we follow the Gemara's advice. Megale tefach. You reveal a tefach. Umechase tfochayim. And at the same time, you cover up two tvachim. You know, a good writer, a good piece of, 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 of writing follows that script. That within the one line of information, there are two lines that are invisible. That's good writing. That's a good piece of literature. You don't have to say everything. You have to say enough to make the reader understand there's more here, you know. And I've had it many times when people call me and they say, so what did you mean? Tell me the secret, you know. <laughs> like, what are you hiding, you know. So what? why am I saying this? Because the Rambam, Hillel, could you turn down your uh, mute because I think it's disturbing a little bit others. The, 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 um, the, uh, the Rambam saying, that the, the, the tsayar, the artist, the, the bauha machat, the, the one who creates the needle, or the uh, creator of the keli, he puts himself into it. The hanimshul bazel, look at the wording further, the nimshul, the moral, yuven lamaila. Ki muskul rishin hu asher, Hashem is borech v'yesalet. Now, I want to point out that the Rambam uses here the words, Hillel, everyone look at the words, Muskel Rishon. These are classical words of Jewish philosophy. Muskel Rishon. What does Muskel Rishon mean? So we translate it as first thought, the first idea. So, Ki Muskel Rishon Hu, the first idea that comes to mind about God is, about Hashem, Asher Hashem is Borech V'Yisala, that the Holy Blessed Hashem, Sholem B'Tachos HaShlemis, is complete throughout, B'Lishum Chesaren, without any deficiency. V'Im Kain, Hare Heder, Musoge, Hachushay, the Bnei Odom, Hu Pigia V'Chesaren B'Shlimus V'Amiti. The, um, the Rambam says, if God is complete, if God is Muslim, the fact that the philosophers say that God is not tangible is a deficiency in God's true shleimut. How can you be complete and say that he's here but not there? He's of an intellectual experience but not a muhshis, a tangible experience. The Rambam says that's a contradiction to God, to the Shlemus of God. The close in Masim in Maimer, and the Rambam says, this is, 
I'm not, once we'll see, I think this is not the Rebbe saying. This idea of the, of the Rambam corresponds with this saying, Avedis HaKodesh, Ein Sof Hushleimus Blichsorim. You know, there's a sefer called Avedis HaKodesh, um, and in the sefer Avedis HaKodesh, which was, you know, written either during the Rambam's time, before or after, but it goes back, and the Avedis HaKodesh writes that Hashem is Ein Sof, God is infinite, Shleimut, Shalem, complete, Belichesorim, without deficiency. Okay, she, look, look at the next words. These are beautiful words brought in Hasidus Yoni many times. Okay, she yesh lo koach bebilti bal gvul. And just as Hashem has koach, power, bebilti bal gvul in the infinite, kach yesh lo koach begvul. So does God have power in the, in, in the finite. The imtomer, and if you're going to argue, that God only has power in the infinite. And God does not have power in the, in the limit and finite. Says the Avodas HaKodesh, look at the words. You are deducting from Hashem's completeness. You cannot argue that God is an existence and a reality that relates only to the infinite, but not the finite. And that's what the early philosophers were arguing. They argued that if you say Hashem identifies with finite and uh, mukshis and tangibility, it's a downgrade to Hashem. It's an embarrassment to God. It's, it's, It's not God. Says the Rambam, I disagree with you. And he quotes Tavoydes HaKodesh. And the Avedis Gaudish says, and it's a powerful word, Hillel, did you ever see this language in any other um, book of Hasidus, or Islam, or anything else? I don't hear you. you got to put on your mute for me to hear you. Not what? that I recall. Right. Um, okay. But in, in Chabad, in Chabad Hasidus, in Chabad Hasidus, this is, this is mentioned quite often in the Maimorum of the Seven Rabbeim. This quote from Voidus HaKodesh. Baruch, Baruch, did you, are you familiar with this saying? Baruch Gordon, I, I don't hear your answer. Uh, familiar with, I've learned a similar concept before. But, but you, you, uh, you, don't, you don't remember the quote. Hilo, you wanted to say something? Yeah, just, um, it says here, Matim uh, imaymer avodas hakodesh. Right. Is that one of the minor, mamarma of, of one of the rabbis? No, 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 no. The, there is a safer called avodas hakodesh. I, 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 I forget now who, it, who it's written by, but it's okay. a thousand years old, I think, you know? Okay, got it. Okay, yeah, so, yeah. Okay, so let me just okay. continue and finish. The of, and this is also part of the Avodis. So, someone's mic is on. Turn it off, please, Hillel. Your mic. The of, who shlei Musa de Chayla. He says there, Ein Sof, God being infinite, is a shleimut the choyla. It's a completion of everything. Now, let me explain this. In other words, you could look at infinity as a, an issue for itself. We are limited, we're finite, and if we say Hashem is infinite, that's enough. And that's the way, Moshe, the early philosophers understood God. God is infinite. And if we adapt God being infinite, we understand He's not like us. And that's why, you hear guys, that's why they argued Hashem is only interested in the intellectual kind of experience because there more of His infinity can be experienced and understood. But in taking out the garbage, I don't see God's infinity. (laughs) So they said, what does taking out the garbage have to do with God? It doesn't. That was their argument. Comes along the Avedis and says, wrong. Wrong because
because your understanding of infinity and God being infinite is a limitation. You have put God in a box, in a definition of infinity. And that's not Hashem. Hashem is Shlei Musa the, 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 the ultimate perfection. And if he's the ultimate perfection, guess what? The garbage is also important. Fin finite is important. The world we live in that was created by Hashem and desired by Hashem is of most importance. So if you strip Hashem from a real interest in the finite world, you don't have shlemus. You don't have perfection. Let me continue. And this is how David HaMelech showed the philosophers that their understanding of God is wrong. So in simple, in simple words, the philosophers, the philosophers argued God is of a spiritual nature. And if God is of a spiritual nature, therefore, what follows is the intellectual realm is adept, is adept for, for spirituality. But the physical finite realm is not, is a contradiction. It's not God. That was their argument. Comes along David HaMelech. And he said, God has an ear that he bends and he listens. He has an eye, Moshe. He has an eye that sees. What does that mean? That means that even the physical symbolism of an eye and an ear has a place in the Godhead. That's what David HaMelech meant. Of course Hashem, of, the, of, of course Hashem has no ears and has no eyes and has no pockets and has no, of course, that's all metaphors. But the metaphors explain that eyes and ears can also, not, and not only can, do justify and complete Hashem. And therefore, the eyes and ears are important. And therefore, Daniel, Daniel, in his feel in his prayer, employs this wording. Why does he employ this wording? Because he wants to show that here we are in Gullus, we're suffering, it's Corona, we're locked up, we need help here. Having help in spiritual experiences is not enough. And the proof is, we're in the situation. So he cries out to Hashem, and he says, Hashem, listen, listen, see, habait, see what's going on. I need, because God, you are about shlemus, completion and perfection, which includes the physical as well. Yes, Hillel. You wanted to say something? Yeah, I just, but earlier when he said, Hochachas Hechasid, uh, I wrote down that you said that, that he was referring to the Chassidus as the Rambam. I'm wondering here, based on what. No, he no, no, you, no. I said he said he's referring to David Amelech as the Chassid. Yeah, that, that was my question. That was my question. Okay. Everyone, oh. Yoni, Yoni, did you follow? Yes, yes. Very, okay, very uh, it's a very, you know, it, it, it's, a, it, it's a philosophical piece. You got to use your cup, you know, and Hashem benched us. Yeah. But th th you, you understand that a thousand years ago, this, this, this was a real, real uh, debate amongst yeah. philosophers. This, you know, today, you know, uh, we're, we're interested in pizza, pizza and soda, you know, or, or you, know, you know what I'm saying? I mean, who, who's thinking about these things? But a thousand years ago, <laughs> this was a, you know, what is God? So, and, 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 and the Rambam to, and, and took time to, to prove, because Nebuch, there were Yidin who were losing their amuna and they were giving up. And they were saying that Hashem doesn't hear me. And, 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 and if I had to say, it's important today too. Especially going through such a trying time. 
You know, I, I, I'm sure there are pe some people are saying, where are you, Hashem? What are you doing? If you're God, how can you let this happen? So when you learn about this, it strengthens your emuna, and there's much more to say, and we'll see how the Rebbe now develops this idea in Hasidic words and terms. Everyone, have a great day. Be matzliach. And we'll see everybody. Thank you. Thank you.